Manga Wido. My name is Ayumu Nakamura. Today is the day when new employees start their first day of their work. I've been assigned to look after one of them called Sato. I heard that Sato is the son of the managing director, and my boss told me to look after him as well. For that, I came to work earlier this morning and was waiting for Sato to show up. Hmm, he's late. Actually, he should have been here 10 minutes ago. Good morning. Are you our new employee, Sato? My name's Nakamura, and I've been told to look after you. You're late, but did anything happen? No, I was drinking until this morning. Ugh. What? I almost lost my temper right then, but I somehow managed to put on a break and started to explain to him about his work. But Sato kept on falling asleep while I was carefully explaining, and I had to wake him up and start over many times. On top of that, this chair is uncomfortable. Oh, your chair looks comfortable. Isn't that cheating? Just you? I have back problems, so I bought this chair for myself, and the company has let me use it here. Well, that's kind of sneaky. I mean, it looks grand. Can't you switch that chair with mine? From the first day, Sato's attitude towards the experienced employees was unacceptable. I had not imagined that the son of the managing director would be such an idiot. After that, Sato used his position as the son of the managing director to do whatever he wanted. He didn't do what he was told to do, got lazy when people weren't looking, and forced other new employees to do his work so that he could go home early. I warned him each time to change his behavior, but it had no effect whatsoever. His co-workers, including the new employees, found Sato's behavior intolerable. For example, in a few years, I'll be one of the managers here and will be way above you. You want to make sure to not get on my bad side, don't you think? He would threaten his co-workers like that. Sato's behavior was getting so out of control that my boss started to warn him as well. This again had no effect on Sato. My boss was so fed up with Sato that he reported to his father, the managing director, but my son told me he's doing his work well. Don't lie to me. He too was an idiot and did not listen to what my boss had to say. Gradually, the atmosphere in our workplace became gloomy. Some of our good workers were starting to talk about looking for work elsewhere. In the midst of all this, an incident took place. It all started when I got angry at Sato. That day, Sato was repeatedly asking one of the female workers out for dinner. This was during the working hours. Hey, hey! Let's go out for a meal together! Uh... I'm sorry, but I'm not so interested. I know a really expensive restaurant. They will treat me as VIP. What do you say? Uh, I'm in the middle of work now. From what I heard later, Sato was asking her out and disturbing her work, although she kept on declining his offer. Hey, Sato, that's enough! When I found Sato and tried to bring him back to his desk, he said something unbelievable to the female worker. What? Do you realize I'm the son of the managing director? Do you want to be fired? Sato was starting to lose his temper while making threats, and the woman was about to start crying. Quit that! What do you think you're doing? This is a place to work! Don't you feel any shame at all for not working, harassing others, and doing whatever you want? Sato was shocked by my loud voice that he became completely red in the face. He went back to his desk without any words grabbed his bag, and flew out of the office. What a miserable guy. When my co-workers and my boss found out about what happened, they praised me by saying, well done. The woman who was being harassed thanked me as well. But I felt like this was not the end of the story. Of course, Sato was the one responsible for this. But I was put in charge of looking after him. Maybe if I had done a better job of advising him, this would have happened. I guess I'm also responsible for not having made any effort to listen to him and being angry with him all the time. Since I felt bad about what happened, I decided to switch my comfortable chair with Sato's as a sign of my apology. I hoped that this might start a good conversation between me and Sato when he came back to the office. But Sato didn't come back to the office that day. I waited for him while working overtime, but since he didn't come back, I gave up and went home. I had no idea that Sato would do something unbelievable while no one was in the office. That evening... To hell with that guy! He shamed me in front of others! Okay, nobody's here. Hmm? Did he change seats? Well, it's fine. 
His seat is where this chair is at. Sure stands out. When he comes to work tomorrow morning, he'll be surprised. He gets what he deserves. <laughs> the next day when I came in for work, Sato, who usually comes into work at the latest possible moment, was already there. Oh, Sato, you came. You're earlier than usual today. Sato was grinning at me for some reason. Does he not care about what happened yesterday? I wasn't sure, but I thought I should apologize properly. But when I tried to speak to him, Sato opened his mouth first. Hey man, take a look at this. This looks pretty bad, doesn't it? What? When I looked over what Sato was pointing at, I saw that a laptop had been destroyed by some sharp object. Hmm? This isn't my laptop. What? But this chair. Oh, I switched this chair with yours yesterday. What? I said a bit too much yesterday. Sorry. I wanted to let you know that I felt bad about it and apologize. I thought I would give that chair to you. It's a comfortable chair to sit on. Even if you sit on it for many hours while working, you won't get so tired. Then this laptop. Oh, that's yours. This is a big problem. Who could have done such a thing? When Sato found out that it was his laptop that was destroyed, he seemed completely shocked. The other workers who had arrived saw the broken laptop and started talking. Our boss said that it would be better to call the police because maybe a burglar or something suspicious could have entered the office. But Sato was against the idea. No, I think it might be better to look into it ourselves first, don't you think? What Sato had suggested that one of us might have done and everyone stared at Sato suspiciously. Yikes! Sato seemed to have hit upon an idea and went out of the room. And a few minutes later, he had brought the managing director with him. Dad, there are people in this department who hate me. Who is it? Who's trying to harass my son? What is going on? This is like an elementary school. When I was standing there in shock at this stupid exchange, Sato said that I think I know who did it and suddenly pointed his finger at me. Mr. Nakamura is always saying terrible things about me. And just yesterday, he shouted at me in front of the other co-workers. That is power harassment. He hates me. I think he's the one who broke my PC. I denied all the accusations, but the managing director had no ears for me and believed all that his son told him. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? The managing director kept on accusing me, but my boss intervened and things somehow quieted down. But the managing director, who completely believed what his son told him, did not seem satisfied. He gave me a severe warning and told me to step down from a project I was leading. Instead, he put Sato in charge. I was to be his assistant. As Sato gained more power, he became more and more selfish and ordered his co-workers to do all his work while he left home right on the dot every day. Because of that, I had to overwork almost every day. On one such day, when I was working, feeling bitter about all this, one of the female workers showed me what Sato was writing on his SNS about the broken laptop. What is this? I realized that this account belonged to Sato because on his other post, he had uploaded pictures of himself. So he was the one. Then on another occasion, when I was chatting with one of the security people while working overtime work, he told me that on the night the laptop was broken, he had seen Sato come out of the office that night. He thought that Sato was just doing overtime work and he had learned about the broken laptop only recently. I could use this information. I had come across some proof by coincidence, but I vowed that I would get my revenge. Although Sato was doing no work at all for the project he was in charge of, he was responsible for giving a presentation in front of the board members as the project leader. I decided that this presentation would be when I get my revenge. On the day of the presentation, Sato explained the slides in front of the board members and the president as if he were the one who had made them. The managing director was very satisfied, and the president also praised the work he had done. Sato was about to conclude his recitation as if he had done all the work by himself. And then, please give me a moment to give you some supplementary information. I raised my hand and went up to the front of the room. I then showed Sato's tweets he had posted regarding the laptop he had broken to everyone in the room. Wh Why do you have this? I have more proof. I also reported what the security guard had witnessed. Sato denied the accusation in panic, but since there were pictures of himself on the tweets, he could no longer make any excuses. 
I reported how Sato had persistently been asking a female colleague out for a meal and using other co-workers to do his job by using his position as the son of the managing director. When I told them that they should consult with a lawyer with the proof of Sato's power in sexual harassment and file a police report regarding the broken laptop, finally Sato, I'm so sorry, confessed. So Sato, you were doing whatever you liked in my company and blaming your co-workers for things they did not do? Yes, yes, <laughs> I am sorry, but please do not report this to the police. All right, I won't report this to the police. However, what you did was unforgivable. Pack your things and leave at once. Yes. You were also fired. You pack your things with your idiot son and get the hell out of my company. What? That is how the office was cleared of all the scumbags. Oh, and there is more to the story. Sato apparently hadn't learned his lesson. I thought he was surprisingly obedient about being fired, but the next day, he posted complaints on his SNS by writing the actual name of our company. Of course, he was sued for defamation by the company, and Sato had to pay a lot of money. And as a result, he couldn't undo what he had done. Whenever he went for a job interview, nobody would hire him. I hear that now he's unemployed and has become a social withdrawal. As for his father, although he could not find any company that would hire him, he couldn't stop himself drinking and wasting money at nightclubs. I hear his debt is mounting. He should have learned his lesson when he was fired. They really are such idiots. They deserved what they got. As for me, I became friendly with the female worker that Sato had been persistently asking out. And we started dating. We are now living together, and we plan to get married next spring. There will always be someone watching you work hard. I know that now. My name is Noyota Kiba. I was around four years old when my dad, who likes to gamble, divorced my mom. After that, I'd been living with my mom. I was poor and had scary looking eyes. Because of that, whenever there was any kind of problem, I was the first to be suspected. When I was in elementary school, if there was a book missing from the classroom, people would blame me for it. If something from my classmates' belongings disappeared, people immediately assumed me to be the criminal. Gradually, people from normal families started to avoid me. And after a while, I realized I was only hanging around with guys who were considered to be delinquents. But I never picked pockets or blackmailed anyone. I didn't want to make my mom sad. I did fight when I had to, but I never hurt those who were weaker than I was. That was my pride. I went to a public high school in my neighborhood, so that didn't cost us any money. I somehow managed to graduate. When I showed my mom the graduation diploma, she was crying from happiness. I almost cried too. But after graduation, things were pretty tough. I had been offered a position in the fall of my senior year. But right before graduation, that company went bankrupt. Thanks to that, I was without a job after graduation. From then on, I had to start job hunting again. Man, what luck! It'll be hard to find a job at a time like this. Don't worry, I can earn money for the both of us. I can't do that to you, Mom! I already decided that I would support us both! Now ya! Yeah. I went to talk to my high school teacher about it, and he told me about a certain factory. It was run by the Manwa Corporation. Apparently, the president of the Manwa Corporation was a graduate of my high school and a former delinquent. He used to be quite the wild guy when he was young, but I hear he's a very respected president. He's also hiring people who have a history with the police. Why don't you give it a try? I was so desperate that I was willing to try anything. I took the job exam, and fortunately, they hired me. That's how I was able to start my life as a working adult, thanks to the president. The president always said it's not about how you look, it's about who you are on the inside. And really didn't seem to care how people looked. In our workplace, there were some people with tattoos or marks or injuries on their faces. There were also people who seemed pretty tough in their own ways. 
But when I talked to them, they were not scary like the way they looked. They were friendly and taught me how to work well. After work, they would take me out for a meal and stuff. I was able to feel at home right away. But unfortunately, the atmosphere in our workplace suddenly changed after about half a year since I began working there. There was a guy who used to work in the production section, but he retired. The guy that got hired in his place was the worst. His name was Hosokawa. He was six years older than me. He graduated from a good university, and although he had been working at another company, our president scouted him. Hosokawa was a distant relative of our president, and from what I heard, he was going to take over the company when our president retired. This Hosokawa was serious and good-mannered when the president was around. But this guy became horrible when the president was not around. Hey, Kiba! You got really scary-looking eyes! Don't glare at me like that! Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't glaring. What? Are you talking back to me? Uh, no. Probably there was no company that would hire you. And you came here, didn't you? You should be thankful to our president. Work away like a horse! Yes. If you know your position, then do all this work until the end of the day! No extra pay! What? Uh, this is a bit too much. What? You're just a high school graduate! Don't talk back to me! I graduated from an elite university! If you can't get this done, you'll be fired! When the president wasn't there, it was as if he had a double personality. He changed his attitude suddenly. He did whatever he liked when the president was not around. He used all of us like slaves. Fortunately, my co-workers helped me out. So the job got done, somehow. After that, Mosakawa would verbally abuse us with words like trash and baggage for the taxpayers. Our president was mostly running around in order to do sales. It was rare for him to be in the office. We wondered whether to report Hosokawa's attitude to the president or not. But the president treated him like his son and had high hopes for him. We were all grateful to the president and couldn't bring ourselves to report him about the terrible behavior of his relative. And it's only been about a month since Hosokawa came here. Maybe things will calm down. Maybe the president would notice what's going on. We made excuses for ourselves like that and didn't take any action. But since we weren't doing anything about it, Hosokawa did as he liked. I thought about punching him several times, but since we're in the countryside, we would have no other place to work if we were fired. And we put up with him somehow. After a while, I got better at ignoring Hosokawa's harassment. Then two new guys joined our place. There was one who obviously looked like a former juvenile delinquent called Suda. The other was a skinny guy named Kubota. Hosokawa grinned when he had a look at them both. After that, things got really bad. Hey Suda! I told you to deliver these! What? I hadn't heard about that. I did tell you for sure! I guess a junior high school graduate can't even understand Japanese? I did graduate from high school. What? Don't talk back to me, you former delinquent! Do as you're told! Take that! Uh -huh. You don't need to kick me! I was working with Suda the whole day, but Mr. Hosokawa, you didn't give him that instruction at all! Shut up! Don't try and cover for your delinquent buddy, you trash! On another day. Hey, come over here, Kubota! Yes? There's a mistake here, too! Can't you enter the numbers correctly? Uh, well, that's not my job. What? I can't hear you! Why don't you talk from your stomach, you skinny dude? Mr. Hosokawa! Mr. Takagi is in charge of that, not Kubota! What? Shut your mouth! Don't you talk back to me! We were so fed up with Mr. Hosokawa who used every chance he could to harass us. Sorry, 
You got yelled at by Mr. Hosokawa today too, right? I couldn't be there for you. Sorry. No. I got used to it now. <laughs> Don't worry. Actually, sorry. If you hadn't been there, I'm sure I would have beaten him up a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've wanted to do that myself. But the president likes him. And he's a candidate for the next president. I hope he'll change his ways soon. Well, I guess a company is a complex thing. It was so much easier when I was in a gang. Gang? Oh, well, I used to do some pretty crazy things and got in trouble with the police. Uh, but that's a long time ago. Oh, I see. Oh, Mr. Kiba, didn't you just think that's what I thought just now? No, no, I didn't think that. Well, maybe a little bit. I guess I can't say much either since I got really bad looking eyes myself. <laughs> right! Hey, you should deny that part. With a conversation like that, I was able to become friendly with Suda and Kubota. But then, things became even more serious. It was after we'd finished a big project and we were celebrating at the office. Well done, both of you! Yes, good job to us! Cheers! Well, this is a Coke, actually. Cheers! The adults were drinking beer and those underage were drinking Coke to celebrate. <laughs> hey! I guess you guys at the bottom of society can have a good time with such cheap beer! What kind of alcohol do you actually drink usually? Osakawa. He came. He just wanted to show off. Hey! What? Pour me a beer, newcomer! Don't you even know how to serve beer? Oh, yes. Ugh, you suck! It's all foam! Uh, Mr. Hosokawa, I'll serve you. Suda, you can go. You can drink with the others over there. What? I want Suda to serve me! Well? You're really good for nothing! Osakawa continued his verbal abuse. He was getting more and more drunk, and his harassment was getting worse. We should have gone to a bar near the train station to celebrate, instead of having stayed here at our workplace. Jeez! It's creepy how people who are stupid protect each other! It's because of people like you that our country's going down! I guess Suda had reached the end of his patience. He glared at Hosokawa. Oh? Wanna fight? A former delinquent is scary. Scary! Suda, stop! That's right! In here is something with a criminal record. I might be attacked! You should all be careful not to get attacked! <laughs> when he was looking at Suda, as he said those words, I was a bit shocked. When Suda said that he had trouble with the police last time, did it mean that he had been arrested? When I looked over at Suda, he looked as if he were ready to throw a punch at Hosokawa. Suda! I intervened between the two. It was then. Kubota turned hard like a stone and pale, and he started shivering. Kubota! Then he suddenly collapsed on the floor. What is this? Is he having convulsions? Hyperventilation? I don't know what's going on, but this was serious. Kubota, come on! Kubota, do you hear me? Breathe slowly. Take your time. As we rubbed his back and talked to him, Kubota slowly started to recover. But he kept on mumbling things like, No, I paid for it. I'm not responsible. I didn't commit a crime. I heard later that the guy with a criminal record was Kubota. He had been forced to play a game of thieves with class delinquents, and the person he stole from fell down and was injured badly. I had always wondered why a skinny and gentle-looking guy like him was working here. I see. Other companies wouldn't hire him because of his police record. 
when Hosokawa said criminal record. Kabona must have had a flashback and panicked. Are you alright? Do you want some water? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm alright. You're not alright. You should lie down on the sofa. The other co-workers came around Kubota. Oh, the president. The president had returned. What happened, Kubota? What is this? Actually, Mr. Hosokawa. Suda suddenly lost his temper and hit him. What? What are you saying? I didn't hit anyone. Don't lie. Shut up. You don't believe what a former delinquent says, do you, President? Is Hosokawa trying to hide what he did? I was so angry that I pointed to something that was at the corner of the room. Mr. President, let's check that out. We installed that last week because there have been incidents of burglaries in the neighborhood recently. There was a surveillance camera that was recording the entire office. When Mr. Hosokawa saw what I was pointing at, he said, It wasn't me, and ran off. Afterwards, we checked the surveillance camera, and Suda's innocence was proven. We talked to the president about everything that Hosokawa had done to us until now. I apologize for everything. The president gathered all the workers and apologized to us from the bottom of his heart. It's unacceptable to abuse one's co-workers. I feel ashamed, especially since he was my relative. I will fire him. So please, forgive me! That is how Hosokawa was let go. I thought that the president would protect his relative, but he did what was right. If he was going to act so quickly, maybe we should have told him much sooner. After Hosokawa left our workplace, things returned to normal. We can now work in peace. As for Hosokawa, I hear he can't find himself a job. He's coming back to beg the president to get his job back. If I knew he was like that, I would have never have hired him. He never showed that side when I was around. I am so sorry. Well, no. It was just for a few months. It's a relief that you fired him so quickly. I'm glad that you fired him before I beat him up. Thank you. Hey, Suda. Don't say such a thing before the president. <laughs> if you didn't beat him up, then no problem. Things were getting pretty serious at one point. But with our president, this company should be fine. I'll work hard to pay back our president for his kindness. My name's Yosuke Maruyama. I'm 29 and I work in the sales department of a certain company. I'm super busy every day with stuff like traveling around the country, and abroad for sales activities and keeping on top of problems as they occur. The company is kind enough to entrust younger employees with more and more work these days, but of course, in proportion to that, I'm left to deal with just as many nerve-wracking projects myself. I do enjoy my job though, even with that stuff included. But there was just one thing bothering me. Yosuke. I'll be in a difficult spot if you don't submit those documents I requested soon. Ah! Oh, sorry boss. I'll have them finished by the end of today. No, that's not good enough. Please submit them by noon. Gah! Uh, noon! I've said it countless times now, but please work with a greater sense of urgency. G got it! This cold-eyed petite beauty is Yuki Murashita, my boss. She's extremely good at her job, which is why, despite being only 27, she was appointed manager of Section 3 of the sales department. As a midterm hire in my first year at the company, I'm in no position to disobey her. She may be beautiful, but she's crabby and unsociable, and emits an aura that makes her difficult to approach. She's great at her job, but hard on those around her. I can't take it anymore! I'm quitting soon! Murashita's such a cold-blooded witch! Hey, Tomoko! Keep your voice down. Besides, you shouldn't speak so lightly of quitting. Tomoko, my girlfriend and co-worker from my department, felt her fair share of ill will towards the boss, too. She's a strong-willed woman herself, so it seems like her and the boss are always locking horns. 
It said that there are actually quite a lot of members of the anti Marshida faction like Tomoko within the company. Apparently, people are always badmouthing her behind her back, calling her things like arrogant and unsociable. Why do I feel like that cold blooded witch has it in for me, especially? Come on, she's hard on me too. Her people manner is too harsh. It's like her arguments are sound, but the way she gets them across leaves a bad taste in your mouth. I can't take any more. I seriously hate her. The thought of having to keep working under her. Ugh. You might not like it, but it can't be helped. What do you mean it can't be helped? Ugh, you're always so evasive and it makes me sick. I'm breaking up with you. It's over. Huh? Tomoko! Hey, wait! She left. Oh, well. She probably just lost her temper as usual. Or so I thought. It's over! Don't message me again! What? Seriously? A few days later, to my shock, Tomoko actually did quit the company. And after breaking up with me, left town. Speaking honestly, I think it may have been about time anyway. I doubt that me and Tomoko, with her abrasive personality, were ever gonna last that long. But I'm ashamed to admit that, in spite of that, it seems like my breakup with Tomoko did end up taking a considerable toll on me. For a little while, I began making mistakes at work. Stuff like faxing or mailing the wrong things or forgetting appointment times. Covering up for almost all of my mistakes perfectly was my boss. Yosuke, there are too many errors in the supporting documents you put together. I can't use these. There are? I'm really sorry! But what about the announcement during the meeting? Other than the finer details on the numerical data, I was able to put something usable together. Please do better next time. Hmm? Do you mean you haven't done any research about the company coming today? You do know this is their first visit. No, that's fine. We don't have time. I'll do it myself. S sorry My hands were tied dealing with some problems that came up. I'll get it done straight away! She got you again today, huh? I don't know how you put up with working under that woman. I feel pathetic admitting it, but... I'm crying, you know? But the thing she says... She's right! I'm talking a while back here, but she wasn't always like that. Really? Yeah. She was always outstanding, but there were more signs of humanity back then. Wow. I see. I wonder, what happened to her? I was really curious about how the boss became such a cold woman. I did have my run-ins with her, but that said, not a single thing she pointed out was actually wrong. She was always covering for me. I'm gonna get my act together straight away and get my own back. No. In truth, it'd be nice if she just acknowledged me. Then, one day, it happened. Me and the boss end up going on a business trip together. For real? I can't believe I'm gonna be all alone with her. Why do you look so absent-minded, Yosuke? The train's here. Let's go. Oh, okay. After three hours of enduring an awkward atmosphere while being rattled around in a bullet train, we arrived at the hotel that was booked for us. Did I really just sit next to my boss for three hours? Huh... We were only traveling, but I'm completely exhausted from the nerves. I put my luggage down and threw myself on the bed. Then, as I was taking a shower and hitting the hay... I want to hold a preparatory meeting to discuss tomorrow. Can you come? I'm in the bar on the top floor. Huh? Now? In a bar? On the top floor of the hotel was a bar with a fantastic view. Apparently, it was really popular with the locals. The boss sat by the window and ordered a cocktail. This is unusual. I guess she wants to chat over some drinks then. Huh? A woman who clearly wasn't a member of staff casually walked over and started speaking to the boss. I know her from somewhere. Huh? Tomoko! Ah, you're here too, Yosuke. Did you come here to get a little closer to the cold-blooded witch over a drink? What a coincidence! And an unlucky one at that. That reminds me. I'm pretty sure Tomoko said she got a job at Wido Trading. 
Does that mean they'll be involved in the upcoming contest too? I can't believe we both ended up at the same hotel! To think you come on a business trip with a woman like this. You are so pathetic. <laughs> hey, stop it, Tomoko. No, really. I can actually say this now, but I was always walking on eggshells back when I was a certain someone subordinate. <laughs> Tomoko was trying to get under the boss's skin with her snide remarks. Then, the boss came out with something surprising. I accept that it was harsh towards you, Tomoko. Huh? I can't just let that go without saying something! Are you saying it was on a purpose? I can't believe it! Yosuke, back me up! Say something! I'm... fine. Thanks. Oh? I see you're still a spineless weasel of a man. And you, I just asked if you did it on purpose! I never did like this about Tomoko. She's so quick to lose a rag and start yelling. The boss also seemed to tense up a little in response to Tomoko's rage. But then... Don't ignore me! You think you're so much better than me! You! you! Tomoko, who had completely flipped out, grabbed the cocktail on the table and threw it over the boss! Tomoko, what the hell? Boss, are you okay? I immediately gave her my jacket, then borrowed a towel from one of the bar staff and passed it to her. Thank you. You should head back and get change. You don't catch a cold if you don't take these clothes off quickly. But the boss was completely composed. I see you haven't changed at all, Tomoko. I understand now why we got more complaints from the clients about you than anyone. C complaints I never heard anything about that! I'm sure you didn't. I dealt with them every time because I knew you wouldn't listen to my warnings. I was distinctly told things like, we got sick of her doing nothing but badmouth people. She blew a fuse over something trivial. She makes lots of mistakes but never takes responsibility. Or we request that you send us a different representative. <laughs> it's true that Yosuke lacks assertiveness sometimes, but that's the flip side of him being so kind and considerate towards others. That's why he's so trusted by our clients, and why our subcontractors are always willing to take on so many projects with him. The exact opposite of you. Y yuki By the way, Tomoko, you said you got a recommendation for Wido Trading, didn't you? What if I did? Wido Trading might be one of our competitors, but we're friendly competitors, and I'm on good terms with your president. Huh? I'll be sure to let him know what you're really like. H hey, don't you dare! I only just got hired! If that worries you, disappear now. Tomoko escaped in a hurry as the boss glared at her, shouting, I hate you, on the way out. After that, I walked the boss back to her room. Let's have the meeting first thing tomorrow night instead. Good night. Yosuke. Yeah? Won't you come inside my room? I have to tell you something. Huh? Oh, oh, okay. Is this a good idea? I had my doubts, but I couldn't disobey my boss. My heart was beating unsuitably fast for a man of my age, as I felt the presence of her getting changed in the bathroom behind me. I'm so sorry, Yosuke. I think the reason I was so harsh towards you and Tomoko might have been because my personal feelings were involved. Personal feelings? I was jealous the whole time. Jealousy? The boss? I'm sorry, but I'm not sure what you mean. Well, you and Tomoko were dating, weren't you? We were, but we broke up way back. I knew it could never be, but I couldn't suppress it. Huh? I don't understand at all. Um, forgive me if this is rude, but by any chance... Did you have feelings for Tomoko? And were you jealous of me? No! Oh. Which means? The one I like is you, Yosuke! Ah. Uh, Yosuke. Wait, that's me! Huh? Sorry it's so sudden. The boss went bright red and stared at the floor. And we decided to return to the bar again. This time for a level-headed discussion. To tell you the truth, I've always been nervous about my current position. Huh? You? Nervous? I'm surprised. She said she felt lost and anxious due to her unusual position of being the youngest section manager in the whole company. She put on a bold front to hide her nerves from others at work, and as a result of being in this constant state of tension, was mistaken as arrogant. She told me her sole comfort in the midst of all that 
was the time me and her would spend together during negotiations. Your handsome features, your calm demeanor, even your tendency to be a little careless sometimes. Yosuke, you're my dream man. <laughs> Stop it! You're embarrassing me. I'm sorry. It's okay, but I'm pleased. I found out about you through Tomoko when I first got promoted. It was a love at first sight. I knew we couldn't be, but suppressing my feelings was difficult. After that, you joined our company. But that made things even harder, knowing you were Tomoko's boyfriend. And that's why you treated me and her so harshly? I'm so, so sorry. Far from the cold-headed section manager I was used to seeing, she seemed more like a young girl of her age for once. After somehow making it to the end of the business trip, I can't say it happened straight away. But after taking some time to get my head together, I formally confessed my feelings to Yuki, and we became an official couple. I'd always wanted her approval and to be there to support her. It didn't take too long for those things to turn into romantic feelings. Ever since then, my boss's manner towards people at work became a whole lot softer, and the number of her supporters at the company increased. Seniors received the change positively, the old Yugi's back, they'd say. As for me, I decided to push forward with my work with everything I had. I didn't want us to start dating only for her to think of me as hopeless. After half a year, I started hearing people say, she's like a different person, and calling her the young hope. And so, after building up enough confidence, I felt like the time was finally right. That's right, I decided to propose to her. That memorable place we stopped at on our business trip, in the bar of the hotel. I passed Yuki a ring. Boss, no. Yuki, will you m marry me? Yosuke, if you're okay with me being inexperienced, of course I'll marry you. Our coworkers all gave us their blessings for the marriage too. Even still, our relationship in the workplace didn't change. Yuki always had a faithful and serious attitude towards work, and from time to time, just like before, her expression would turn sour. But when we get home, she clings to me lovingly. It's so cute. She's like a puppy. I find that gap so endearing, and I'm head over heels in love with her. By the way, as for Tomoko, my ex, I heard she eventually ended up leaving White Oak Trading. According to rumors, that prickly personality of hers was her downfall, and after causing a series of problems for her clients, she was banned from entering several companies. All of her co-workers hated her because she tried to blame her mistakes on them. I wonder where she'll go from here. If she doesn't work on improving her personality, she'll probably just continue repeating the same mistakes. I hope she can find happiness somewhere far, far away from me. Anyways, I have my own work to do. We have our future family to think about after all. My name is Tomoya Okawa. I run a company with Naoki Kato, who is my childhood friend and a fellow geek. We started up this shared house system specifically for geeks. It used to be a normal shared residence, but one of the sharing spaces was a theater room, and all the rooms were soundproof. On top of that, it had all sorts of gaming devices. It was also near one of the famous events venues, and before we knew it, the place was filled with all kinds of geeks. We're living here to test out life in the place, but it has been awesome so far. Look guys! My new DVD just arrived! I love how this place has a delivery locker! It makes things so much easier! We're getting together to watch it! You guys should come and join us too! Oh, great! Yes, we'll be right there! Everybody had different geek qualities and their feedback helped us improve the house. We appreciated all of their comments, and one day, one of the residents asked us to prepare a copy machine. It's such a hassle, going down to the convenience store to print everything before every event. Can you guys get a nice copy machine for us? Naoki, what do you think? I think it's a good idea. I know how hard it is to make flyers and brochures for events. It'll save a lot of time, and they won't have to stay up every night like they always do. I guess so. It'll benefit us, too. We could make all the documents for our company here. Let's not waste any time! I will contact the copy machine maker! <gasps> Thank you! You're the best! 
The next day, we contacted the copy machine rental company and asked them to bring the cost estimates. We were all excited to see how this change would benefit all of our lives. And I never expected what happened next. Thank you for calling us. I am Haruto and I will be... Uh... Oh no! You're Tomoya! Huh? And you are... Naoki the Geek! What? The salesperson who came to our place looked shocked to see our faces. I looked at his card and his face, and tried to remember who he was. Oh! You're Haruto Ito! We went to middle school together! Wow, Mr. Ito! It's been a while. Hey! Don't act like you guys are my friends! I can't believe you're still geeks! You're a loser, just as I remember! His attitude changed the moment he realized who we were. He scoffed at us, which was extremely irritating. But he was always like this. When we were in middle school, Haruto was the popular guy in class. He would always make derogatory comments on how pathetic we were. To him, we were losers who didn't deserve to be treated well. Not that Naoki or I ever cared. However, something happened that changed everything. If I remember right, we were on a field trip making rice. Some of the girls were having trouble getting the fire started. Haruto went to help them so he could hog the spotlight, like he always does. However, he couldn't get the fire to start. Haruto lost his temper and started making a scene. That's when Naoki came and saved the day. Why don't I try? You? What could you possibly do, you freak? No, you're good. That was so fast. Naoki, you're amazing. Believe it or not, the fire started the moment Naoki stepped in. It's not a big deal. I read about starting fires in my favorite manga, Desert Island Dessert Time. The book Naoki mentioned is unknown to 99% of the Japanese population, so the girls were all curious about it. Naoki stayed at the center of everyone's attention that day. He did an amazing job with the cooking, and everybody, including the girls, loved the curry he made. I just read about this in a manga about cooking. You guys should all read it if you want to make good curry. Starting from that day, Naoki became the popular guy in class. The girls loved hearing all of his geek knowledge and episodes. He seemed a little overwhelmed since he wasn't used to girls talking to him. But Haruto was not happy with the situation. He started picking on Naoki every chance he got. Get out of my way! You losers shouldn't be taking up so much space! Ouch! Hey, Haruto! I know you bumped into him on purpose! Shut up! It's his fault for standing in front of me! He always seemed frustrated. Soon, his friends all started leaving his side. All the girls who used to fancy him started avoiding him, and they all thought he was way out of line. And as Haruto started noticing how the others were treating him, he took it out on Naoki. Bring it on! Ugh! Piece of cake! Yeah! Haruto picked a fight with Naoki during PE, only to get utterly defeated by Naoki's super judo skills. He doesn't look like it. But Naoki is a strong guy. He works out to fight through the chaotic crowd of geeks at events to get the manga he wants. Plus, one of his favorite mangas was about judo, so he mastered some moves. Haruto was crushed when he found out Naoki was stronger than him. He never came close to us after that. I was disappointed when I saw him because I was hoping I would never run into him ever again. However, he was here on business. I figured I should at least hear him out and let him talk about the copy machines. But instead of doing his job, Haruto started insulting us. According to him, geeks were incapable of maintaining a business. He hadn't changed the slightest bit since middle school. We did our best to dodge his rude comments and directed him toward the door. Afterwards, we asked other rental companies for rental plans. We decided to sign a contract with a different company. What? You idiot! You're supposed to sign a contract with me! Jeez. I was impressed. How could he think we would sign a contract with him after how he treated us? There's another company willing to rent out a better copy machine for a lower fee. Damn it! You're gonna regret this! I'm recording this conversation. You're the one who'll regret speaking to me like this when we go to the police. I don't give a crap! Just sign the contract with me! My boss will kill me if you don't! We can't. Everything's decided now. The copy machine is coming the day after tomorrow. Bye then. 
I thought I made myself clear, so I didn't expect him to call us again. However, Haruto surprised us. He used a despicable trick to threaten us. Are you sure you aren't going to sign the contract with me? Look at this! Huh? What the heck is that? What's going on? Are you guys fighting? Hey! There you are, Naoki! I know this is your book! I don't think that's mine, Haruto. I stole it when I went to your place. Just in case you guys decided not to sign the contract. Um, I'm not into boys' love. It's not mine. Don't lie to me! You're the only freak who's creepy enough to be reading this kind of crap! Haruto seems to be holding a thin boys' love book. I had no idea what he wanted to prove with the book. If you won't sign the contract, say goodbye to your precious book! What the heck, man? If it's not Naoki's, it could be anyone's property! Cut it out, now! Shut up! If you want your book back, say you'll sign the contract! We've already signed a contract with another company! You need to bring the book back! Hey! What are you doing? Stop! Don't do it! You losers need a lesson! This is what you get for disobeying my orders! Haruto ripped the book into pieces and threw the remains into the river! No! We heard one of the female employees shriek. That was... that was my... most treasured item! Her name is Miss Mono. She's worked with us for a long time, and she's also a resident of the shared house. This can't be true! That's not just any book! They don't sell it anywhere anymore! Haruto! Do you realize what you've done?! The book he just ripped up is a masterpiece by an author called Yano. It's worth more than 200,000 yen. What?! There's no way that gross piece of trash is worth 200,000 yen! You can only find them in second-hand bookstores. And if you're lucky to find one, they cost about 300,000 yen. I looked up the book online and showed Haruto the page I was reading. He turned pale. You can't be serious. It's just a stupid book. It may be a stupid book to you, but it's the most important thing in my life. I don't know how I'm going to live without it, you jerk! Haruto, you've committed a grave crime. What?! He's right. Damage to private property? You could get thrown in jail for under three years for this. What?! You can't be serious! Thrown in jail?! I'm not going to jail! It's the price you need to pay for damaging the most important thing in my life! I will never forgive you! What?! Miss Mono was totally serious. She sued Haruto, just like she said. Haruto begged her to forgive him. Miss Mono being the kind person she is, told him she would let it go if he could get her the same book. Naoki and I spent the next few days searching. We looked at auctions and second-hand book sites to find the book. In the end, we were lucky Naoki was so good at finding things online. The book cost Haruto 400,000 yen. Haruto kept saying it cost too much, and how there was no way he was paying for it. You're in no position to be complaining about the price. You need to pay up and apologize to Miss Mono properly. Haruto knew I was right. He clenched his teeth and paid the 400,000 yen, and apologized to Miss Mono. Naoki, I don't know how to thank you. How about I start by taking you out for some coffee? Hmm, you don't have to thank me. I know how much that book meant to you. I would be furious if it happened to me. But, I have no interest in girls in the real world. My heart belongs to the 2D manga world. Uh, I see. Even Miss Mono seems to be put off by Naoki's words. In any case, we were all relieved the whole thing was over, and peace had returned. However, it wasn't the end for Haruto. His wife found out about the money he had to pay to get the book back to Miss Mono, and they ended up in a huge fight. I heard from one of our former classmates. During the fight, his wife blew up on him, she had it with all the rough behavior and violent language Haruto made her deal with while they were married. They ended up getting a divorce. I also heard that he was demoted. I might be to blame for that since I called his company to tell them what he did, and that we would never be signing a contract with them. I also asked them to keep an eye on him so he wouldn't attack us again. My bad. I guess he couldn't take the shame and humiliation. He quit the company a few months later. He's now jumping from job to job as a part-timer. His parents cut him off too. When he got divorced, he had to sell his parents' house to pay child support. 
I heard his parents were furious. I caught a glimpse of Haruto tottering into an internet cafe, but he looked just awful. I don't feel bad though. He deserves everything that happened. He shouldn't have treated other people's things like he did, whether they were geeks or not. Oh, Tamoya and Naoki, you came at the right time. I need your help. Okay, sure. We need to staple all these? I'm on it! Thanks! Whoa, he's fast! The copy machine has helped all of us at the shared house. Geeks have been contacting us non-stop about the shared residence. We are considering building a second one since there are so many interested. Naoki and I are both excited to see what the future holds for us and our company. I'm Ishida Yamato, a high school student living in the countryside. My grandfather has been running an inn since my great-grandfather's generation. It's what you might call a long-established business. It's a simple inn, but it's thriving thanks to the presence of a tourist spot in the neighborhood. The high school I go to is about 10 minutes away by bicycle, so I sleep in until the last minute. My father always nagged me to get up so I can help him with his work. Shut up! I was up late studying! How am I supposed to get up in the morning? Don't lie to me! You've been playing video games! You think you can take over the business like that? I'm not taking over. What? I'm off! It's not that I don't like the family business, but I want to choose my own path, and I have a yearning for the city. It's time for me to decide on a career path, but working at home wasn't an option for me at the moment. I'm going to somehow convince my father to let me go to the city. That's what I was thinking when one day... Welcome home, Yamato. I'm home. When I came home, my father was facing a strange family in the lobby. They didn't look like guests. They didn't even have any luggage with them. As I was wondering what was going on, my dad came over to me, keep an eye on these two, and whispered that to me. From what I heard, this mother and son were staring blankly at the river from a bridge near a tourist spot. That means, yeah, it's very possible. I can't keep an eye on them because I have to work. I'm counting on you. I can't say no to something that involves a life. Are you hungry? Even if it's just a drink? I took them to the cafeteria and served tea and Japanese sweets. I didn't think it was a good idea to ask them too many questions, so I talked to her son, who seemed capable of understanding me. My name's Yamato Ishida. I go to Manwa High School and I'm a sophomore. And you? I'm Takeru Uchiyama. I'm in 7th grade. 7th grade, huh? What's popular now? Card games were hot when we were kids. We play a lot of card games too. Takeru replied, but his mother remained downcast and didn't look up. As I was thinking how severe the situation was, the mother got up to go to the bathroom. I led her to the bathroom while looking out for her, and I talked to Takeru again. Your mother doesn't look well, but is she okay? Are you in some kind of trouble? If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Actually... Then he begrudgingly told me the story of how he came to be here. My father is strict. All he ever wants me to do is study. He even makes me skip dinner when I get bad grades. And my mother always gets beat for defending me. Seriously? Today my mother suddenly said, I'm going for a walk. I'll be home late, but don't worry. I thought it was strange, because she doesn't usually go out that far, and she rarely says things like that, so I followed her. His mother remained silent and continued riding the train, and after getting off here at the end of the line, she wandered around and got to the bridge. Let's go home! She didn't move even when he called out to her. And then my dad walked by. It's almost dark. It's dangerous to be by the river at this hour. They were staring at the river for a long time until he called out to them. His mother came out of the bathroom just as I finished hearing that. I led them to the room my father told me to. They were very reserved. My father forced you over here, so don't worry about it. Please, take your time. I left the room after telling them. I immediately told my father what Takeru had told me. From there, it was quick. My father talked to them. Um, we will be leaving. We don't want to cause you any more trouble. Don't worry. You can stay as long as you want. Actually, your son told us about your situation. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't think it's in your best interest to return. 
That's... that's true, but... Why don't you take this up with the appropriate authorities? I'll introduce you to a lawyer you can trust. I know someone at the city office, so I can introduce you to them as well. I believe there's something called a shelter. Please, relax here until you get in touch with the person in charge. Oh no, we can't cause you that much trouble! This is a place to rest your mind and body. Don't worry, we won't charge for accommodation. Please feel free to take your time. We're on your side. After saying that much, the mother broke down in tears. Takeru also started crying. We watched them gently until they calmed down. After that, Takeru and his family entered a shelter for victims of domestic violence through the local government. And three months later... I was able to get divorced safely and found a job. It's not much, but it's worth the accommodation. Thank you so much. A letter of thanks arrived by registered mail. To that, my father said, I see. Good for them. After that, he continued with business as usual and got back to work. He didn't say any more. I thought he was really cool for that. It made me want to be like him someday. And that's when I decided to take over the inn. To that, my father told me, You're a hundred years too young to call yourself an heir! With a warm smile. And my mother, who was the proprietor, I'm glad you're making that decision. She also smiled. I started working as a high school graduate, making mistakes and causing problems for those around me. But after a few years, I could do everything on my own. The employees recognized me as the next heir, and we worked together to run the inn. But life doesn't work out so well. A large typhoon caused a flood and landslide, which took out the entire tourist area. Our building was also damaged. They said it would be a few years before tourists would return to the area once it was fixed. My father decided to close the business after numerous discussions with his employees. I'm sorry. It's my fault. You were willing to take over, but I'm also sorry to my employees. <laughs> it's not your fault. You've already found new jobs for your employees. No one has anything against you. I tried to find a job to cheer up my parents, who were devastated. The employees managed to get rehired through my father's connections, but because of the typhoon damage... We can't hire any more people. I was put on the back burner. As a result, I still haven't found a job. My parents say they'll work in the neighborhood, but they still have a long way to go until they're old enough to get a pension. I can't make them do any more after they've run out of spirit with the closing of the business. Don't worry. I'll work, so you two take it easy. You've been working all this time. You need to rest a little. I acted cheerful in front of them, but... I was getting anxious because I couldn't find a job due to the recession. I'm sure there are jobs in the city. But I couldn't just leave them on my own. I went for an interview at a hotel that day as well. But I guess it didn't help that I was obviously exhausted and my face didn't have a lot of energy. We don't want to hire poor people like you. I have 13 years of experience at my family's inn. I'll do my best with sincerity for our guests, so please! That family home was also ruined by the typhoon the other day, wasn't it? You're like a plague. If I hire someone like that, my house might go under too! <laughs> I was told on the spot that I wouldn't be hired. I have one more interview this afternoon, but I'm feeling so down it's not looking good. I finally understood how that mother and son felt. The feeling of wanting to look at the river from the bridge. They got back on their feet, but I don't know if I'll ever get back on mine. Can someone like me, who followed the path that was laid out for me without much hardship, be worth anything? Maybe it'd be easier to just give up on life. But if I'm gone, my parents will lose all hope. I can't let that happen! I managed to muster up the courage to go to the hotel where I had an appointment that afternoon. I tried to smile and replied as cheerfully as I could, but... The interviewer looked reluctant. We will give you the result in the near future. I was told. But to be honest, I wasn't confident at all. No, no look here either. either. Damn it! what am I going to do? I was just trudging back home when... Ishida-san? You're Ishida-san, right? Hmm? Who is it? Ah, I knew it! From that time! 
I turned around, and there stood a young man with a neat face. Um, oh! Are you Takeru by any chance? His gentle smile reminded me of him from over a decade ago. Yes! I'm Takeru Uchiyama! The one you saved along with my mother! You remembered me! How could I forget you? You've grown up! How's your mother? Is she doing well? Yes, she remarried the owner of an inn after that, and now she runs the inn as the proprietress. Proprietress? That's amazing! You took our recruitment exam, didn't you? The person in charge just showed me your resume, and I was so surprised that I came after you! Is this hotel yours? Takeru's mother took him with her after she divorced her husband and looked for a place where she could live and work. And the place they arrived at was a rusty inn. At first, the inn was sparsely populated except during the busy season. But Takeru's mother didn't give up. I want to serve customers in a way that will remain in people's hearts just like Ishida-san who helped us. As a result of her hard work, the number of guests grew and grew along with the inn's reputation. And the man that was running the business? This is all thanks to you. I want you to be with me all the way. He asked her to marry him. The man who ran the business is said to be the opposite of her ex-husband, a man of integrity, and they get along very well. We're doing so well that we decided to open a second branch. This is it. I've been in charge of running this place for three years now. I see. That's great. You and your mom are amazing. Unlike me, you guys have a bright future ahead of you. I... I've been called poor, and even a plague. I can't even find a job. About that, please, work with us if you'd like. What? But, um, I, I honestly didn't get much out of the interview. The interviewer was impressed with your background and dedication, but was only concerned about your lack of energy. But, an unlucky guy by myself? <laughs> if you say it like that, we were poorer and more ill-fated in the past. I was moved, this time by Takeru's kind words. I've been dragged down by the criticisms I received at the interviews. How pathetic of me. I know your personality. I know you'll be fine. Please, come work for us. Please, let me repay you for what you did for us. After that, I was officially hired by Takeru's hotel and was able to work there. A while after I was hired, I took Takeru to my parents' house. I'm glad you're doing well. You've grown up to be a great man. They cried and rejoiced. I couldn't be happy that you're doing well, and the fact that you even came to see us? Thank you so much for that time! We were able to come this far thanks to you, Ishida-san! We've been working diligently to become honorable people like you. You are our benefactors and our goals. I also met Takeru's mother. Her skinny cheeks had plumped up, and she was in good spirits. She had become a beautiful and joyous proprietress. I have never forgotten you or your father. I will repay your kindness even if it takes me a lifetime. Thank you so much. I'm also grateful to you for hiring me. I'll work hard from now on. Takeru's hotel puts the customer first and is full of hospitality. For the sake of hospitality, employees should make their own decisions and act on their own initiative. That's the motto of the hotel. Thanks to this, I'm able to work to the best of my ability every day to bring smiles to our guests. I'm truly happy to work at such a rewarding hotel. It makes me happy as a manager to hear you say that. I look forward to working with you in the future. Yes, I'll do my best. Oh yeah, on a side note, the hotel that made fun of me for being poor went out of business before I knew it. I heard that they were selective about their customers and condescending to them. So I guess it's no surprise. I'm going to continue to support my parents and work hard. I'll become a great man like my father someday. Dad, Mom, stay healthy and watch for my success. <laughs>